Okay. And then we have uh, the member from Calgary Southeast, and uh, you know I've had a, a, some debate with this member, and uh, just reading the article in the Globe and Mail today, uh, MP doubts social benefit of same-sex marriage, and to hear the arguments that are produced there, I mean, <laughs> I guess we could spend several days just debating how ridiculous uh, these arguments are, because he's resting his case on the idea that marriage is, is primarily or, or only about producing children. It's about procreation. Um, and, you know, I think there are so many reasons that that is completely invalid uh, to begin with. I mean, all of us know couples, we know married people who either choose not to have children or maybe cannot have children. Um, you know, what are we saying? That somehow they, they, their marriage is not to be validated, it's not real. Um, and in fact, there are same-sex marriages. There are same-sex relationships where children are procreated. I mean, there are, there are all kinds of families out there. There are different kinds of families that have children, that don't have children, where the parents are the biological parents, whether they're the adopted parents. And to me, this is the whole point of the, of the debate. Is to, is to recognize the reality in our society that you know a family isn't just one thing as defined by the Conservative Party of Canada. It, 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 isn't, you know, it isn't that narrow. And um, the Minister of Defense said that, well, people evolve and decisions evolve, and I, I would agree with that. It seems that only the Conservative Party, who, as we know, dropped the word progressive from their name, they're the ones who aren't able to evolve with this. And they are denying, they are denying you know, um, many, many people in our society the same kind of respect and dignity uh, and choice that other people have. Um, so to rest your case on this procreation argument, um, again, I think is a, a very false premise. And I, I, I would recognize, though, that there are other members in that party, and I know the uh, member for Calgary uh, Centre North, I read his article that appeared in I think his local paper or maybe other papers, um, and I very much appreciated that the member for Calgary North Centre um, had the courage to write an article and to say where he stood and that he respected choice and dignity and people's rights um, and that he was in favour of this, of this bill because I know he's a minority in his own party and there are a few others there as well. Uh, so I want to say I very much respect that and the fact that he had the courage to, uh, to speak out. In terms of my own position, um, I do want to say that, um, I, as I said, I, I don't see this as a debate about tolerance. Um, I don't see it as a debate of, of destroying tradition or undermining other people's rights. Um, in fact, what I believe is that you can actually be against same-sex marriage and you can vote for this bill. I, I believe that that is possible. Uh, because to me, what this bill is about it is about our duty and our responsibility as members of parliament to uphold people's rights and choices. And I don't believe that it's up to me as a member of parliament to say to somebody else, to say to a, another couple, you have no right to get married. So I, I think it is very possible that you can be opposed to same-sex marriage for religious reasons, for cultural reasons, whatever it might be, personal reasons, it doesn't matter. You, that choice is not taken away from those members. But I see a distinction between that and what our role and responsibility is as a member of parliament. You know, there's 308 of us and we have a very privileged position in this place. We come here and I believe that one of our core uh, roles is to, is to uphold the values of our society in terms of people's rights and their choices. And so I come here as a member of parliament, uh, no matter what my personal views are, my duty is to uphold those rights uh, for equality. And so I would, I would really encourage uh, members of the Conservative Party um, to think about that. Because at the end of the day, surely it is my choice if I wish to marry my partner who is a woman. That, that is my choice to make as long as I'm doing it within the, you know, the bounds of, of civil marriage and so on. I, I cannot understand and I cannot see how any other member of this house or, or the state as a whole has a right to deny me that choice if I want to make that choice. If I choose to live common law or if I choose to be married with my partner who is a woman. Um, so to me that, that is a very fundamental question um, in, in this bill that is put forward. Um, 
The other question that I want to deal with, Mr. Speaker, is, uh, is the question of religious freedom. And I know that members of the Conservative Party have raised this time and time again. And in fact, I think, you know, I understand that within, within the faith community, there are different points of view. There are some uh, religious institutions and churches who, um, who feel very comfortable with the idea of same-sex marriage and are actually willing to perform same-sex marriages within a religious uh, setting such as the uh, United Church of Canada. And I think that's great. But there is absolutely nothing in this bill that forces uh, any religious institution, whether it's a synagogue or a mosque or a temple or a church, to perform a same-sex marriage if they don't want to. So I think the whole idea that this is somehow uh, infringing on religious freedom um, is something that has become very politically motivated. And I, I'm trying to be not negative in this debate. I mean, in the spirit of what others have said, I'm trying to be very positive uh, and to sort of stick to the high ground because I can tell you there are some points when I felt pretty damn mad about some of the comments that have been made and, and the way the debate has taken place. And, and I've seen that there's been a political agenda, an attempt to be divisive, to go into ethnic communities and to somehow divide people. Um, and so I think, you know, let's be clear that this bill protects religious freedom in every way. And for anyone to say contrary um, is misrepresenting what this bill is, is about. And, and I know that we're getting, you know, hundreds and thousands of emails and letters and faxes every day. And uh, I guess, you know, we read through the ones that we can and uh, some of them go into the recycling. Some of them have been pretty vicious. Some of them are you know, have been uh, pretty nasty messages. But uh, some of the ones that I came across, they're actually quite hilarious. Um, and uh, I, I just, uh, I, I have to kind of laugh at some of them. Um, you know, there's one, uh, one that came forward. Um, it says, even our Canadian goose mates for life. Let's learn from nature. Please vote to preserve the sanctity of marriage. And I, and I was uh, thinking of a good response to this one and something like, you know, Daffy Duck is, a, is, is no basis on which to base the principles of marriage. Uh, so that might be a response to that one. We got another one that says, uh, get control. You are an elected member of parliament in a democratic country. Therefore, you are responsible to all Canadians, not your party. Use the authority that Canadians have given you to vote against Bill C-38. And I, I would actually agree with this one. I mean, I actually think that's what I'm doing uh, in a democratic country. Um, I am voting on the basis of upholding uh, democratic choices and, 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 and choices for Canadians. Uh, so it's funny how we can interpret these things. Uh, another one says, where is it going to end? End it now by voting against same-sex marriage. And, um, and I think this, this message really plays into the fear that people have. And I understand that that fear does exist in some communities. And people are very worried about losing their sense of tradition. And I think rather uh, than MPs fueling that fear and exploiting that fear that people have, um, I think we do have a responsibility to say to Canadians uh, who have you know, concerns about this bill that it, it's not about fear, it's not about something that's ending, it's about something that's beginning. It's about extending the celebration of love um, and commitment into a civil institution of marriage. And that isn't something that we should see as an end. We should see it as a great beginning. Uh, there are other messages that we got, um, which I won't go through them, but I'd, I'd just like to close, uh, Mr. Speaker, by saying that um, I hope very much that this uh, debate will, you know, it will be a full debate, it will be a respectful debate, but I hope it doesn't go on forever. Uh, at some point, we do have to uh, I, I hope get this bill through because it's, you know, we have these court decisions. People are, are marrying every day. Same-sex couples are marrying every day. Uh, we can't go back and undo those uh, marriages. So I hope at the end of this debate we will recognize uh, that we are reflecting Canadian society and the values there of dignity and respect and equality. And I know that in our party we'll be voting for this bill. And I want to thank all of the couples out there, the same-sex couples, who have really devoted their lives uh, to bringing us to this point. Many people put themselves on the line, both financially and personally, in terms of litigation. And I think we, we have a lot to be grateful to them for the work that they did, groups like EGAL, 
uh, and Canadians for Equal Marriage. They've done a tremendous amount of work. Let's now do our job and make sure that we vote for this bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.